um welcome to the week 5 retro for uh, the league um if this is your first time i don't think this is anybody's first time so i think i'll just skip the instructions um but we will set the 60 minute timer and we'll start um today we'll start off with uh, okay first let's look at the overall cause you can see that there is an anomaly one extremely one, one significantly easier quad than any of the others it was the algebraic chess notation one um i wouldn't have guessed i would have thought it would be something more entertainment types but uh, but i think with chess there are a few there's a small set of uh, guesses that you can choose from so even if you don't follow the game at all uh, you know which words to try out and maybe one of them will get right so remember this is also when i say 171 it doesn't mean that it's the easiest quad it just means it got answered the most times across all games so it just means that in groups of four people usually knew the answer of this quad um the rest of the year is up there as well i think because the answers are uh, are not completely unheard of even though there was an, one answer called uh, we should all be feminists which i don't know is, uh, i don't think is that common an answer uh, which is what makes this a little surprising oh the rest of the year is not that oh it's root number 1 bar 60 okay that's um okay let's start off with uh, beatles is glass onion which i think shitej will has volunteered to go first thanks shitej for volunteering uh, your first question john lennon wrote which 1968 song you are correct it is class onion i happen to be a massive beatles fan myself by the way and uh, you should know that when i first heard about the song glass onion i was confused about it why because this story which is john lennon heard that somebody was teaching his lyrics and then decided to write a song just to mess with that person this story has been used twice for glass onion and for another song that is an answer to another question you'll see a uh, question for shitaj uh, which in, the third reference makes a reference the third verse makes a reference to which 1967 single written by paul mccartney it is allegedly about maharishi mahesh yogi who taught the beatles meditation in the himalayas until they grew disenchanted with his methods hence the first line of the verse which is followed by i tell you man he's living there still this is the man on the hill or something on the hill the yogi on the hill you have managed to get this wrong well done achut <laughs> Fool on the hill. Fool on the hill is right. Could have prompted, but ठीक है यार इसे second time को. Uh, and by the way, this question, if you're ever reading for a, for a group, this question is where you can normally filter out the Beatles fans from the non-Beatles fans. A Beatles fan will tell you sexy Sadie. There is no reason to guess anything else for this. If you see a question, uh, saying that's allegedly about Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, then the correct Beatles song to guess is sexy Sadie. So if this is sexy Sadie, that means they're a Beatles fan. If they don't say sexy Sadie, meaning they're not a Beatles fan. But everybody will get their question wrong. And so I read this today for uh, some fans who are uh, some uh, non-player leagues for fans, and they said, "Had you just said one word with a rhyming line, I tell you, living yeah. still, we would have guessed Hill and still should rhyme." Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah, true. Okay, second verse makes reference to which 1967 track, famous for being one of the first rock songs to use an orchestra. Look at this story. The nonsense phrases were invented after Lennon learned that an old school teacher of his was making students study Beatles songs for meaning. The title is in reference to a Lewis Carroll poem, and Lennon was dismayed to belatedly learn who the villain of the poem really was. I need a teammate, or this scorecard is going to look really bad. I I don't remember. You don't remember? Okay, passes. Arnold. Yeah, I am the Walrus. It is I am the Walrus. And genuinely, like if you read up about both these songs, they seem to have the same story. In both cases, John Lennon heard that somebody was teaching his lyrics. In both cases, he wrote a song full of nonsense just to make a point. Um, and fourth question for you, Tish. Uh, the Glass Onion starts with a reference to which single released the previous year? The title refers to a place where nothing is real. It has since lent part of its name to music festivals around the globe, including arguably India's largest student-organized music festival held in Bangalore. This was strawberry fields forever. That's correct. And we have an extra now. Uh, this is for Shubhish. The second chorus of Glass Onion mentions a Beatles song, seemingly named after the Virgin Mary, but but actually representative of the average working class woman. Which song, which has Lennon wondering how, with children at her feet, she manages to make ends meet? I don't I can't hear you anymore. No, no idea. I. Don't I'm not a Beatles fan, so Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Not that. What is it? Lady Madonna. Children at her feet. Lady Madonna. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, next one. No, first let's look at this. Uh, graceful decline. I suppose so. Well ordered. Uh, Fool on the Hill got answered five times, which is a pretty tiny number. Like you said, the rhyming would have helped. Let's look at drug lords on screen. Questions are for a truth. Alice Braga plays Teresa Mendoza. What happened to the image? There was an image somewhere, no? 
Oh, interesting. We might have a problem then later on in this uh, thing. Uh, Alice Braga plays Teresa Mendoza in this adaptation of the telenovela La Rina del Sur. The series follows Teresa. She falls in love with a member of a drug cartel, but is forced to, to first to flee to the US, eventually setting out to become a drug lord herself and vowing to avenge her lover's death. Simply translate the title. Queen of the South. Right, this is Queen of the South. Quite a lot of people were able to figure out Queen, uh, but mm. South was a little harder. Yeah. Question for you. This 2000 British comedy film written by Greg Ferguson tells the story of a middle-aged widow named Grace Trevithin who turns to growing cannabis in her greenhouse to avoid losing her house to debt collectors. The two-word title of the film has a double meaning as it is the story of redemption for the titular protagonist, but the same phrase can also mean a redeeming quality or characteristic. What is the title of the movie? Saving Grace. Saving Grace is right. I was quite happy with this question. There's quite a lot yeah. of clues packed into it. Yes, it it's it's become I think like like a it's like a typical Mimir kind of question where uh, you can there's like a clue there's two ways like one is the media itself if you've seen it and so on and then the other is you can try and work it out right. and I think it's uh, yeah quite like I quite like the question. There, well. there is quite a lot packed into it. Yeah. And third question for you. Uh, this one also has quite a lot of clues. Uh, what is the one word title of this show? It refers to the drug being sold, the black garments traditionally worn by a widow, and the hardy plants that are struggling to survive. Weeds. Weeds is right. Do you know the second reference? Black garments being worn by a widow? No, I don't these actually. Are, these, these are called widow's weeds. Uh, not what, ah. is, uh, what you'd be wearing at a funeral would be called widow's weeds. And your fourth question. And it came the Black Widow. This woman was a Colombian drug lord affiliated with the Medellin cartel, was active from the 70s yeah. to the early 2000s. She's said to be portrayed by Sofia Vergara in an upcoming Netflix series. Who was this woman? Her first name alone is enough for a point. Achu, do you remember her name? Let's see. Ah, <laughs> uh, no. No, I don't. I'll pass. Pass to Shadir. Uh, pass. Pass is to mm-hmm. Anand. Yeah, it's actually a very interesting this story. Uh, Griselda Blanco. What's the story? I mean, this I just the story of her life as a drug. This thing. Uh, there was a podcast called Kingpins. I think mm-hmm. it's featured among them, uh, which is where I heard of her name before. This. Nice. The upcoming show is supposedly is is called simply Griselda. So that's that's why it's, I suppose this is in the news. That's why you're seeing it in quizzes. Uh, and your fifth question: This is your extra. There is no extra. Um, question. Okay, here's what happened in that quad. Uh, not so graceful. Saving Grace turned out to be slightly easier than Queen of the South. Uh, thanks to those clues, I suppose. Griselda, I think, was the hardest question of the of the week. Only three people answering that correctly. The rest of the year, quite a lot of people got missed ears, as you can see. Arnold, you are probably not among them since you were reading. But first question for you. The Dress of the Year is an annual award run by Fashion Mag- a Fashion Museum in Bath to recognize the alphabet best represents contemporary fashion. Uh, the 2021 award went to a black Armani dress worn by which controversial figure for her March 2021 interview with Oprah Winfrey. The curators, the curators claimed that it would go on to be more and more important and a recent autobiography and delayed eponymous documentary bears out that claim. I don't know if I would have got this, but it's Meghan Markle, I think. It is Meghan Markle. You wouldn't have got it even in, even in spite of the Oprah hit? I haven't seen Oprah ever. I mean, I don't think anybody <laughs> has, has watched the interview has regularly seen remember. Oprah. But, uh, I don't okay. remember seeing any videos of Oprah okay. on any place. Question for Arnold. In recent years, the dress of the year has moved from capturing fashion zeitgeist in the abstract to more direct representations. In 2017, this t- t-shirt bearing which slogan, also the title of a book-length essay by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, was selected as part of the dress of the year. Uh, if I remember it right, it was something like everyone should be a feminist or something. That's close enough, I suppose. This is we should all be feminists. And this is your third question. Which designer de- uh, designed this? Uh, I, you know, I, I should tell you that all of the uh, outfits that were selected for uh, Dress of the Year on their website, they all have mannequins that are in poses that look unnatural. I don't know why. But every single one of them seems to be falling over or, or have crippling backache or something. Um, but yeah, who was the designer who designed the outfit selected to be the first dress of the year? He is widely acknowledged as the inventor of the miniskirt, hot pants, and waterproof mascara. Uh, Dame Quant. That's correct. This is Dame Mary Quant. Your fourth question. Um, who wore this dress? 
<laughs> this is the only one of the quad that I can tell you. I've got uh, Jennifer Lopez. This is Jennifer Lopez. In our playtesting, we realized that we had not added an answer image, so we fixed that very quickly. There is an answer image. This is uh, Jennifer Lopez. And your fifth question, this is the extra. The 2001 dress of the year was a Tom Ford and YSL collaboration. The outfit consisted of a peasant top and what kind of boots? The name of the boots references the kind of person who'd wear it and was fresh in public consciousness due to the Oscars that year. Nice mm -hmm. entertainment question for Arnold. <laughs> Oh, uh, I have no idea. Cowboy? That's not cowboy. Arnold, uh, Shridish? Uh, princess or uh, some sort of princess? Not princess, Ashwin? Mm, no idea. Gladiator. Gladiator is right. So uh, nice. oh, wow. Thanks to the okay. movie Gladiator, these boots are called Gladiator boots. Who was spending other funda about the JLO dress? Ah, I suppose it is overdone. Uh, here's how that quote went. Uh, no standout things. Jennifer Lopez was easier than Meghan Markle. Uh, in yellow face, we had only one. Does anybody else want to volunteer or can we stick to Shitish? Is, is no, she I'd like to volunteer if that's fine. I'll give you one. Throw, I will add you. Thank you. First question for you. Just like blackface is a practice of usually white people decking up as black people for performances, Hollywood has had many examples of what has been termed yellow face. That is, white people using makeup to play Asian characters. Which German actress is seen here from The Good Earth, where her portrayal of a Chinese farmer's wife won her the best actress Oscar in 1937? Dietrich? Uh, no, not Marlene Dietrich. Arnold? Uh, Louise Reno. Reno. Reno, the actress. <clears throat> Your second question, I took. One of the all-time greats, this two-time Best Actor Oscar winner was known for method acting and complete immersion. Uh, this was perhaps a case of the producers making one demand too many or making him an offer that he could not refuse. Name the actor, seen in Tea House of the August Moon, playing Sakini, a local on the island of Okinawa. Not Brando, right? It is one Brando, well you should know uh, Arthur is attempting these questions for the first time, so that's why that explains uh, okay. uh, this. And Arthur, this is your third question. Uh, he has played a mad German scientist, a bumbling French detective, and a misfit Indian at a party. There was no way that he'd change up, he'd pass up the challenge of trying to perfect a yellow face role. Identify the actor seen here as the titular doctor with a fiendish plot in a 1980 film. Incidentally, a 1976 comedy also saw him playing an Asian detective. A uh, bumbling French detective. I'll go with Peter O'Toole. Uh, Not Peter O'Toole. What, what was I thinking? Sorry. What is his name? Yes. Uh, uh, Peter Sellers. Is Peter Sellers, yes. Friend. And your fourth question. Because the makers of Cloud Atlas used the same actors to play different roles in different storylines, this bit of yellow face was probably unavoidable. Identify this Australian actor in a role set in futuristic Seoul. His, uh, his most famous film role was that of an agent who is the antagonist to a Mr. Anderson in a sci-fi film series. Yeah, uh, this is the Matrix guy. What is his name? Uh, I can't remember his name. Uh, the Matrix guy, basically. Sorry, I can't remember. His first name. name is Hugo. Does that help? Yeah, yeah, Hugo Weaving. Hugo Weaving. Yes. And here is your extra. This actor was one of the most popular actors as a child and teacher. Mm -hmm. and... Yep, that's the chord. That's the answer that you expected to see in this chord. This is yeah. Ronnie. Very, very nice chord. I think this is one of the roots, I think. Um, okay, who's attempting? First, let's see yellow face. How did that play out? Uh, relatively graceful, tiny little comparison here. Uh, between Hugo Weeping and Peter Sellers are about roughly equivalent and you've seen, you've noticed most of our elfos are playing quite hard this time everything is in single digits in terms of uh, answering traveler gods who wants to take a tap take a shot this year, man, i can try yeah. first question dosogen are shinto deities believed to guard travelers jizo is a dosogen specifically guarding children while a dosogen statue can be spotted at the beginning of spirited away where the protagonist enters a new world, a Jizo statue features in which 88th Studio Ghibli film on childhood innocence. This is uh, My Neighbor Toto. That's correct. 
it's useful even if you don't follow Studio Ghibli movies to have a couple of these titles in your back pocket. My uh, favorite trivia about this movie is how <laughs> apparently Miyazaki was asked to like for title suggestions uh-huh. uh, in like the Western <laughs> world. Like Totoro is like a hard word to say, so you figure out some Western name. Okay. So he, one of the ideas floated was my neighbor Craig, and he says, "No, I'm not going to go with Craig because uh, nobody should be named Craig." Your uh, your second question. Uh, Rick Riordan's Percy Jackson series revolves around several teenagers born of Greek gods and mortals. Luke Castellan is the son of which teleporting Greek god of travel? I can stop here if you want. Yeah, this is Hermes. Hermes is right. Yeah. I thought you'd be more uh, strict with the Mercury, but it's nice. That we it's we did add a prompt for for people who said Mercury, and yeah. and I was in a couple of games where people said Mercury first, and then on prompt they were able to get it. And in exactly one mm. game, they weren't able to go from Mercury to Hermes. They stopped at Mercury and couldn't oh. give me a better answer, which does also happen. Um, Balsamin, being the current god of the heavens, was also believed to control the weather, leading travelers praying to him for good weather on their journey. The temple was located in which UNESCO World Heritage Site, which was remarkably intact over two millennia until its demolition by the ISIS in 2015 during the Syrian civil war. It's Palmyra. It is Palmyra. That is what it looks like, or lo- used to look like. Mm. And your fourth question. What epithet is given to Artemis, Diana, and Hecate? Is it? I don't know if I've been saying it wrong all week. Is it Hecate? Okay. I think uh, it's Hecate. 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 Okay. Hecate. 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 Yeah. Like, Due to the role as a protector of travel generally and crossroads specifically, uh, this word has entered English to mean something that players of this quiz league hopefully enjoy. The trivia. Yes, right. The Roman word for crossroads was, I think, trivium or trivum, mm-hmm. um, which means three roads crossing. Oh, well, yeah, this is the answer text that you never really get to see in the quiz because it's the last one. Mm-hmm. And I think we have an extra for this. Do we have an extra for this? We should find out. No, we don't. Uh, my neighbor Totoro was significantly easier than trivia. Uh, we thought trivia was a common enough under now that it can be answered, but and which is why it was at the end of the quiz. We I, I generally don't like ending the quiz on a slightly harder question. So the last quiz, last question of the of the set will usually be an easier one. I think we uh, mm-hmm. that was a misstep this time because it was only nineteen percent answer it. Um, I would have imagined Palmyra to be answered a lot more than mine than the others. Yeah. Really? Okay. No, not not uh, not from the others, but just stand alone a lot more. Okay. Um, architect groups. Um, who's attempting this? Arnold, you're on your own, otherwise. First question for you. Estonian-born American architect Louis Kahn was known for designing many institutional buildings across the world, such as the Salk Institute in America and the Bangladesh Parliament Complex. The following quote may seem repetitive, but that is also the point he was making. If you say to blank, if you think of blank, you say to blank, what do you want blank? And blank says to you, I like an arch. And if you say to blank, look, arches are expensive and I can use a concrete lintel over you. What do you think of that? Blank Blank says, I like an arch. Fill in the blank with a five letter name of a building material. All blanks are the same. Brick. Brick, right? Stone also fits the, the letter requirement. So stone was a popular uh, guess. But yeah, the point was, if you use bricks, apparently you will inevitably end up making arches. Second question, uh, that fellow coined the phrase blank is blank in 1947 and used it to encapsulate his design philosophy, arranging the necessary components of a building to create an impression of extreme simplicity. Which well-known phrase or design aesthetic is this, which finds application in many fields from art to UX design? Yeah, this one I think out of known. Less is more. Less is more, right. I think this should be quite an easy one, but I haven't seen the data yet. And your third question. Robert Pinchuri was an American architect and winner of the Pritzker Prize in 91. He is known for his ideas of redirecting American architecture away from widely practiced, from a widely practiced modernism in the 60s to a more exploratory design aesthetic. Pinchuri is also known for having coined a four-word maxim, a postmodern counter to Mies van der Rohe's famous modernist dictum, which we saw in the last question. What is this phrase which rhymes with Mies' maxim? Less is a bore. That's correct. And I suspect this might... Not have been answered very frequently. So we'll see. I, I said I I answered less is an eyesore on this, and <laughs> Kiran did his best to you know help me out. It's like I prompt you twice. Yeah. Like I cannot get him. Sorry. Question final. Pioneering architect Le Corbusier had mixed feelings about this city and the country it was in. Though he was pleased about the many urban building projects coming up there in the interwar period, he was not happy about the reception he received when he visited in the mid mid nineteen thirties. About which city did he say? 
100 times have I thought blank, blank is a catastrophe and 50 times it is a beautiful catastrophe. I think the only clue is that you needed two words. Yeah, to two letters in mid-1930s construction. I'd like to think I'd have got to New York, but I'm not sure. It is New York. And a new question for you. At the 2009 Aspen Ideas Festival, Tom Pritzko interviewed Pritzko winning uh, architect Frank Gehry and one point asked him, now that you've had a long career, is there a building you haven't done that you'd like to do? What did Gary Quip referring to the family business of the man interviewing him? Family business of the man? Oh. Tom Pritzko. Uh, eh. I have oh, sure, I just showed you the answer. Uh, oh, no, I didn't see it at least, but I have no idea. Either, so. Okay, I'll pass to yeah. Shitija Ritru. Uh, no idea. Pass from me. Shidhar? Pass. Passes to Ashut and Shik. I don't know anything. Left if she has. Rishi? You're on mute in case you're saying it. Okay. Okay. No, we'll, we'll pass. Sorry. Anybody in the audience wants to shout it, sir? Shout it, sir? Is it like a public hotels? Trump? Hotels? Which hotels? Trump? Hotels? It, it is hotels, but I need to know the name. Which which specific hotel oh. chain of hotels are we talking about? Oh, yep, so this um, is uh, Hyatt is Hotels. Oh. Hyatt. Apparently, by Tom Pritzker's. I didn't know that. Nice. Okay. Uh, for utter crap, this was four questions on shit. So, question for Shitha Janaratra. <laughs> on the left is the source material in berry form. Uh -huh. so we usually know it in bean form. On the right is a cup of the final product. Which topical, which topical mammal's digestive habits form the link? I would assume this is the civet, right? It is the civet. I have since found out that luwak is the regional name for, for the same creature. We weren't accepting that. Uh, we had to add this little clarification later. Second yeah. question for you. Uh, this diagram demonstrates the three main types of this particular species of insect. Dwellers, tunnelers, and rollers. Dwellers just plonk and lay eggs there. Tunnelers build a tunnel below the heap. And rollers roll away bits of the heap and bury them elsewhere. What are these creatures? Shiddhi? Dung beetle, I think. You are correct. It is dung beetle. The third question. If during your travels down under, you come across certain piles filled with fruit seeds of different colors and sizes, avoid stepping on them. But admire the fascinating work of an important player in the environmental ecosystem. This creature's habits are responsible for the propagation of flora across the landscape. Which frugivorous bird is responsible for these piles? Okay. From down under, I'll go with emus, but doesn't fit the quad. It's a popular guess, but not that. Ashut? Cassowary. So the cassowary, right? This was nice. uh, Australian bird crab shoot. So <laughs> yeah, that's the really, crab shoot. You just had to pick the right uh, Australian bird. There wasn't. They weren't any other clues, I think. And yeah. uh, fourth question for Shitajaratra: The creation of the Haber Bosch process solved the problem of sourcing nitrogen. Until then, large scale manufacturers had two main sources of nitrogen. One was from mining nitro deposits. What was the second? Sourced largely from the Chincha Islands off the coast of Peru. Guano, bad guano. Guano, right? I didn't realize it during the quiz that this was part of this quad. Otherwise, I would have probably arrived at Guano, but completely oh. lost. Yeah. And we have an extra quiz. Yeah. Um, when T, uh, while T. S. Eliot is credited with introducing or popularizing this word in his poem, "The Triumph of Blank," the etymology goes back to the French word "bol," meaning fraudulence or deceit. Which word are we talking about? Crap. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Crap. Not crap. C R A P. Toilet or something like that. Not toilet. Is it uh, bullshit? Bull yeah, bullshit. Bullshit is right. Well then. Oh. Yes, <laughs> it has a work called the time for bullshit. Bull. Right? Nice one. Okay. We're doing okay in hundred greatest non-English sporting moments. As you can see, sports tends to be a divisive thing in our league. Uh, three people scoring muskets in that round. Question for uh, Achyut and Rishi. 
when the Guardian released a list of the 100 greatest sporting moments of the 20th century, it was dominated by English moments. There were a few exceptions. In 27th place was a moment when a German lad captured the imagination of the tennis world by winning the Wimbledon singles trophy at the age of just 17, becoming the then youngest ever winner, who is this player who later coached Djokovic and is currently spending time in court, having filed for bankruptcy. Becker. It is Boris Becker. Boris Becker. The second question, uh, which Belarusians exploits at the 1972 Olympics showed up on the list, grabbing three goals and enchanting the world? Although she won only one more medal in 76, all of which came at a significant personal cost, the sparrow from Minsk left an indelible mark on the sport. Olga Korput. It is Olga Korput. What is the... Standard... Yes. Personal risk, as in, is it a physical injury? I, that actually, you I, I actually don't know enough about this myself. Uh, Dhruv, do you know? Oh, actually, Arnold, maybe you're the right person. Yes. <laughs> well, well, every time I read the game, a... I told myself I have to research and I keep forgetting. One, uh, one, of her, one, of her, one of her moves, known as the cor- Corbut flip, was banned from competition because it was that risky. Too dangerous. So, yeah. yeah. Mm. Oh. Okay. So, that, second, that, so basically, she, 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 was, she was quite, she was extremely like, innovative and a lot of the stuff she did was dangerous. So, that, I guess mm. that was, a, she, didn't, she didn't actually suffer any career, like major career injuries, I think. But the stuff that she did was, uh, at least one of the main thing was later banned because it, uh, okay. it's too dangerous for people to do. Ashut and Rishi, this all-black player nice. single-handedly outperformed England at the 1995 Rugby World Cup, nicknamed Freight in Ballet Shoes. B- Ballet Shoes. His performance broke English so much that the captain said, I wish he would go away as soon as possible. Devastatingly, he did so in 2015, gone forever from our midst. Ooh. Jonah Lomo. He is correct. I'll add a... a, a bit. So normally in, in, in each of these sets, I pick up a couple of new words that I had never heard of. I would not heard of this person before. But I have watched a couple of YouTube compilations now and they're very entertaining to watch. It's, yeah, it's, yeah he basically just charges through people, right? It's, a, it's an entertaining yeah, sport yeah. to watch. Question for Chutan Rishi. Uh, on 31st place was a two-footed kick by a non-English man, otherwise known for his one-footed kicks. The event made news not only for its insanity, but also for the confusing press conference quote that followed. When the seagulls, take a sip of water, follow the trawler, it is because they think sardines will be thrown into the sea, which infamous 95 incident is this, which he later covered as a song. I didn't know this at the time. This is quite, uh, I mean, enjoyable to learn. This is like Eric Antonas. Kung Fu Kick. Kung Fu Kick. A very creative guess I got was uh, some I, I forget who but it was some goalkeeper who saved something using oh, the scorpion uh, kick the scorpion kick. that was what I was thinking of yeah, yeah, it, it, it fits so well it's a uh, yeah, it kick by a long Englishman otherwise known for his mm. one word kicks but unfortunately no. it's a uh, remarkable goal as well like, uh, like this is a question it is. I had asked in a quiz I had done long long ago mm-hmm. okay and your extra for Achyutan Rishi Number 25 on that list featured a non-English feat, but one that came at the expense of England. The feat led to Graham Gooch. Are I can stop you only. You shouldn't have said that name. Mm-hmm. If it had been a cheese roll, it would not never have gotten past him. Which moment? Joke is funny, but I'm guessing this is Vaughn to Gatting. And what's yeah. it called? The Ball of the Century. Ball of the Century. Okay. It had okay. been a cheese roll. <laughs> Uh, for Chinaski, that is Charles Bukowski. Um, does anybody want to volunteer from the call? I don't see any other videos on, so I'm adding <laughs> Bindu. Bindu, you'll be attempting this. Bindu and Arnold together. Uh, the often controversial Los Angeles poet and novelist Charles Bukowski's 1982 semi autobiographical novel, written using a thinly veiled alter ego called Chinaski, can be read as a Kunstler Roman, that is a story that narrates an artist's transition to maturity. Its title has been interpreted by many to mean an idiom representing boshed values, but it could also just be a reference to a sandwich that he liked, made using a type of bread common in Germany, his birth nation. What is the title of the book? Arnold? Oh, uh, Ham on Rye. It's K- Kinsler Roman, by the way. In German. Kinsler, okay. Kinsler Roman. Kinsler, and, Kinsler, this is, yeah. and this is Ham on Rye. Your second question. The first chapter of which 2016 non-fiction book is titled Don't Try? The epitaph on Charles Bukowski's grave, who was the main inspiration behind the work. The book is a dig on most self-help books that perpetuate extreme positivism and suggest that life struggles are what give it meaning. You would understand if you'd rather not say the complete title out loud. Questions for Bindu.
uh, Anil, let me guess. Oh yeah, I, oh, I know the answer because I, I've read it. So if you want to guess, you can, others I can yeah. give out the answer. It. It's the subtle art of not giving a fuck. Yes, correct. It's very enjoyable if you're reading a game and you see that mm -hmm. the question is basically giving you permission to say fuck out loud. Because some people really relish it. They've, they've not said it for a while and, and at the end of that guess, they really get uh, to feel it. Do you, did you have the the sort of parenthetical text in the original answer also during the quiz? Because yeah, this, has, this hasn't remember? changed all. Hmm. Okay, interesting. Because I remember I, I missed out on subtle art. I said... Or maybe I missed out on art entirely. I remember saying Definitely something that did not include subtle art or subtle, but I didn't get it anyway. But yeah, it's... third question for Bindu. Uh, Charles Bukowski published this first novel in 1971 as an autobiographical memoir. Once again, using the alter ego called Chinaski, Bukowski writes about his time as a clerk in a sort where the titular establishment amidst many bouts of resignations and rejoining. What is the two word title of this debut work? Yeah, you can. If you're trying it out, window, you can see the you can see the uh, sorting part, and you can see also look at the image at what he's sort of like sort of. Uh, Another disclaimer: Bindu is also seeing these questions for the yeah. first time. She has oh. not attempted this in quiz before. Yeah. So. Okay. No clue. So Anil, go for it. Anil, go. Post yeah. post office. Post office, right? And your fourth question. His last work written when he was ill and published a month before his death in 94 is a meta work in a genre that criticizes that very genre, making fun of itself as stereotypical of the genre in the, in the grimiest form. What is the one word title of this work? Incidentally, 94 would see the word made famous via other media. Uh, I think it's pulp. This is pulp. But yeah, nice. Do we have an extra? Yes, we do. Extra question for both of you. Bukowski's poem, Let It Unfold You, is a message of hope and fighting through one's internal turmoils and finding peace and happiness amidst the worst of life. Appropriately, which 2018 film sees Timothy Chalamet recite the poem in it? We've saved up all the entertainment questions. <laughs> yeah, I know. I got I got the seat which had all the quads that I would normally have. Yeah, really well at. Um, Bindu? Uh, you have something? title of this movie was some like something to do with everything it was like very vacationy kind of a movie i don't oh. remember the name i i don't know i don't this? know any yeah i'm okay. passing at least i don't know bindu wants to have it again so I'm good. That's okay. i don't have it Oritro, do you have it uh neither do i i'll pass pass it to a shoot issue call me by your name mm. somebody had to say it but it's not that um, yeah, I thought oh, beautiful boy. Twenty seventeen, I think. You too, beautiful boy. It is beautiful boy. Oh, oh nice, nice. You know what Appropriately. And two to one buses. Um, we have a musket here. Sanjay got a musket in that question for Shitiji Navitro. If you start at Canada Water and end at Tottenham Court Road, you'll be taking the bus route number one in which city? Should London. be London, oh. right? Oh yeah, jump the gun. Yeah, it is London. Your second question, Balok or Baloch, I'm not sure, is a small village on the foot of Loch Lamond. Bus route 1 of which city starts at the bus terminus there and ends at a bus stop on Osborne Street close to the River Clyde. Let's see if Arithra picks correctly, otherwise Arnold and Bindu will pick up. <laughs> uh, Loch Lamond, if I'm not mistaken, is Inverness, Inverness, I'm not sure if that's the correct answer. That's what I'm going for, Inverness. Not bad, Arnold? Uh, Let's see if we pick correctly. Blasco. Uh, Blasco is right, yes. Inverness is incidentally near one one of the locks, but I mean, it's near Lock, it's quite close close everything, to Lock. everything in Scotland is near one of the locks. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> but uh, but, yeah, but Inverness is actually quite close to Loch Ness itself. That's Loch Ness. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I confuse Loch Ness with Loch Ness. My common trend was for somebody to say Edinburgh and the next person to get points. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> In this city, the route number one bus could I, could either mean Felix Villas to Happy Valley or Star Ferry to Chuk Yuen Estate, mm -hmm. depending on which island you are in. Which city? Go oh, Islands, Felix Villas, Happy Valley. Hong Kong. Hong Kong is right. Mm. 
And your third question, if you start at Thanan Tok and end at Sanam Luang, a large open field and public square in the center of the city, you are taking the bus route number one in which capital city? Capital city, Bangkok. I thought it right. This also got passed on a lot of times. Somebody said yeah. Phnom Penh, somebody said uh, Jakarta. I said Jakarta, I think. Yeah. We, we had like three three passes and the fourth one by elimination. It was yeah. really hard. And there's no by elimination. There are plenty of guesses over here. This is not a list of two. This is I yeah. you, could, you yeah. could name five or six valid guesses over here. Someone retroactively said it was vaguely Thai something. I think like, okay, maybe. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we had Hanoi, Kuala Lumpur, and one more, and then uh, yeah. Mm. Shri Shri Shri, through these statues of ancient kings called Indios Verdes mark the starting point of bus route number one in which city, going all the way to El Caminero. So green Indians sound Spanish. I'll go with Mexico City. Could it be any other Latin American. Mm. Nice extra. I haven't seen this. Oh. Okay. And Faithful Nights. Uh, did anybody guess? I don't know if anybody guessed. Um, This is leftover from last week. So we had one extra uh, night squad. And uh, and we hadn't managed to use it. So oh. once you have questions, you have to use them somewhere. So Faithful Nights in Germany was from last week. Questions for... The use of this term to denote a treacherous friend dates back to the 5th century when Saxon leader invited the king of Britain's for peace talks and then instructed his men to draw the CX or the CX, their infamous blank blank, and massacred the Britons. The term's most infamous use was in describing a similar event that took place from 30th June to 2nd July 1934 in Nazi Germany. What term? Mm. Long knives. That's correct. This is Night of the Long Knives. Your second question. Um, another fateful night like that of the Long Nights was the November program that took place in the free city of Danzig on the 9th and 10th of November 1938, where the German SS and SA forces demolished Jewish establishments using sledgehammers. What name is given to this event, Night of the Blank Blank, in reference to the objects littered on the street from the damaged windows of the Jewish, Jewish synagogues? You could also give us the German name or its literal translation. Ajut and Rishi, you need to give me all three. Is it Kristallnacht or Broken Glass? Or what is the third one here? What is and the li literal translation of the German name? Glass night. Light, yeah. A crystal night, night of the crystal. Crystal yeah. night. Yeah, crystal night, yeah. 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 Broken glass, crystal night, and crystal night. And third question. After the night, long nights, Hitler ordered that all copies of Reichenstahl's propaganda from victory of faith be destroyed because oh. it showed him in close proximity with which leader of the brown shirts or the SA. The night of the long nights was itself called the blank purge. His primary aim was to reduce this man's power and thus also the power of the brown shirts. Do you remember his name? Zerum. Is correct. R O H M. Ernst. 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 And do we have an extra? I think we. Oh, wait, sorry. I think you. Yeah, fourth question was still pending, but let's see if you get it, guys. In the aftermath of the Night of the Long Knives, Adolf Hitler looked for a new headquarters for the branches mm -hmm. of the SA. Perhaps unsurprisingly, he handed his work to which Nazi era architect who worked closely with the Fuhrer and was later convicted on the Nuremberg trials? His name is an anagram of a local river. Spear. Very well. This, uh, I think I think I said I uh, Einer or something. <laughs> Henry is what I guessed first. I found the oh, last line to be a little little strange mm. because I think spear is probably more well known than the reverse spray. So the spray. Yeah. Um I can tell you where that came from, if you like. So the, the oh. original last line was uh, his name is shared with that of a local river until we realized that that was wrong. Um, <laughs> okay. I had to be corrected. Yeah. Uh, there isn't a fifth question, but uh, let's see what's next. AC Daru, this is uh, for Arnold and Bindu. Okay, Arnold first Arnold. question for you. Okay. Which Indian indigenous alcoholic beverage, mainly consumed in South India, is made by fermenting the sap from different types of palm trees? It is not to be confused with a warm beverage, typically made with whiskey or brandy, hot water, honey, lemon, and spices. This is yeah. definitely Tod Tod yeah. Or Tari as it's locally known. It's correct. I actually, I've since received a one more local name that we should have been accepting. Uh, I don't have that with me right now. Kalu, I think. Is Kalu the Kalla. one? Kalla. 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 Yeah. yeah, it's what it's called in Kerala. Your second question. This ind indigenous alcoholic beverage is enjoyed by people in central India and is typically made by fermenting boiled rice for about a week. Served cold, it is usually low in alcoholic strength. What drink is this that gets its name from the Hindi word for the urban pops in which, in which it is fermented? Uh, this is called Handia. Yes, uh, I, I know this because like I uh, I was there in Orissa. Oh, wow. this, is, this right. is from my part of the world. Personal experience. Jharkhand. Jharkhand. And a lot of 
a lot of cases of like adulterated handia would happen and people would actually pass away after having like mm-hmm. adulterated handia that used to happen a lot during mm-hmm. summers especially apuru yes. in our game said uh, i know the odisha name is handia so i'll probably guess matkia for him and he just oh, said <laughs> I guess, and third question final in the Kesar Blank is an indigenous alcoholic spirit that was made by royal distilleries in Rajasthan. Such was the allure of its scent that Roger Moore reportedly got hooked to the drink during the shooting of Octopussy in Rajasthan. What alliterated special ingredient fills in the blank, the use of which became illegal following the 1972 Wildlife Protection Act? Yeah, I wouldn't have known this one then, but it's Kasturi. It is Kasturi. Yeah. I I asked if deer musk was accepted, but I think it said uh, alliterative. So I guess you wanted. Yeah. You would have gotten a prompt on deer musk, but uh, yeah. But yeah. Uh, the the drink is still made just without the musk, uh, which is uh, which is interesting because this little Roger Moore story actually post dates the Wildlife Protection Act. So whatever version he was drinking was probably not the authentic one, unless he yeah, had context. Yeah. So. That kind of also occurred to me vaguely that that's the eighties, right? The movies. yes, would be would be after this. Unless, unless yeah. Sense, yeah. And fourth question, final and with Lucy described as a crude rum. This Indian indigenous liquor, often legally dis- distilled from the fermented juice of sugarcane, is consumed predominantly by the poor in Bihar, UP, Punjab, and Haryana. According wow. to linguistics project Urdu time, the, the Urdu or Hindi slang for lustful person or pervert originates from a phrase that means someone who enjoys consuming this liquor. This is question of the week for me. But what drink is this? Yeah. Old and Bindu. Yeah, it is a nice question. Um, Bindu, answers, you want to give the answer from your expertise of the middle answers, and North India? Yeah, definitely Thara. Um, <laughs> like, yeah. Sort of like teasing used to happen. Like, yeah. Thara, so, like uh, Thara was one of the answers floated around as one of the guesses, uh, like preempt, like before this question, but. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it still got missed by one person on the question because I think uh, like the last line was a TIL for everyone. Yeah, I I know a lot of people managed to get to the word Thurki, but uh, couldn't make the jump mm-hmm. from Thurki to Thara, even though they would independently have recognized the word Thara. So it is, it is a proper gotcha. Thare ka shokin. That's actually very cool. Thare ka shokin. Yeah. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> that's going to be a band uh, quiz team name somewhere now. So I'm sure. <laughs> okay, we have an extra question panel in Bindu made from rice and molasses. This desi liquor is sold in stores backed by official government licenses. It shares its name with the mother tongue of that state and was once the drink of choice for many until middle class consciousness led to snob led to snob value developing against it. Name it. There is some personal feeling from the questions that are coming out in this question. Can you, can you feel it? <laughs> this question set a drop. Uh, I think yeah, it's a um, but, but I don't know the extra is by uh by Drew or Floyd. I'm not sure. I think no, that, I uh, do the extra. Uh, I did the other four, but I, the extra is not mine. Okay, so this is Drupal. Yeah, so is this is not. Yeah. This is not a Mara Maras. Rice and molas. Rice and all should be like east. Uh, east, some eastern state, right? So, mother tongue is what Bangla. Then it is Bangla. Yeah. What's your answer? Bangla, Bangla. Is absolutely right. Well done. Right. Nice work out. Nice one. It's it's ridiculous that there was one. Um, there was one Indian desi liquor that I knew that I kept guessing for like two questions in this quad. <laughs> what, what was it? I was hoping that there would be an extra. Was it Mahua? Place. It was Mahua, yes, yeah. because it falls back to another play that I watched in college. Yeah. But alas, Mahua, Mahua would make it but a totally Mahua. East 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 India quad. Because Hadiya is East India, Thara is East yeah. India, Bangla is East, East India. Thari is Thari is uh, is is more west though, although it's all oh. over. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Although, yeah, Thadi is also available in Jharkhand and all these places. Question for Shrita Jana Rutra now. This is, for, uh, this is the quad on algebraic chess notation. Um, Fide chess notation usually uses one character to indicate the piece being moved and two characters to indicate the square that it moves to. Uh, for example, bishop to b2 means that the bishop has moved to square b2. Several additional symbols exist. Uh, what does the hash symbol indicate at the end of a move, of a move as a queen to f7 hash? This symbol is rarely seen in published games played at the highest level. Any any clues, kids? Shitesh? Yeah, I I think I remember all answers for this quad, and I'll share a story after this. But I, you can. Oh, yeah, please, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, uh, what was this one? Indicate. Uh, I think the last line is pretty. So the fact that it's rarely seen in published games is, I think, uh, 
indicative of you know something that would not you wouldn't let a game reach that point at the highest level so what you can give the answer now shit if you want oh, okay yeah. I, i think it is it like the pawn changing to queen uh it's not bad arnold and milo oh checkmate checkmate is right so oh nice yeah Yes. At the high level, players yeah. will usually resign when they have when they know they have a disadvantage that they are hands. unlikely to get back. So, uh, right. uh, I think when I was reading it, they said check, and I that I assume was not a prompt because it didn't. Say no, it. definitely not a prompt. No. Yeah. Question for Shitajan Ritu. If we just notation, what action does the character equals indicate within a move? As in E8 equals Q. This action can only take place on the last rank. What do you think this one is? Ritu? Is oh, this a pawn changing into a queen? This one is a pawn changing into <laughs> any piece. So the pawn can't. The pawn can change into any piece, right? Not this. Yes, yes. any piece. Typically, is a queen, yeah. and that equal to whatever will determine what it correct, is. Correct. Correct. So, so people will normally make puzzles and stuff where uh, where it is advantageous to turn into something else, like a like a knight or something. Those are often very cool mm. chess puzzles that you get. But in the game, you would normally almost always want a queen. <laughs> Uh, question for Shridhar Janardhan. In FIDE chess notation, what move is indicated either by the symbol that or that, depending on the direction chosen? O and zero are interchangeable here, as the characters do not directly indicate which piece or pieces are actually moving. Ah, uh, castling, I would think. It is castling. It says which pieces are actually moving. They only move where two pieces can, ah, uh, can change location. And your fourth question in FIDE chess notation: What does the plus indicate at the end of a move? As in a rook to h7 plus. This is a forcing move in chess, meaning that the other player must respond to it immediately. This should be check, right? This is check. Uh, let me ask you something. This is not FIDE uh, official notation, but in in certain uh, writing notations, what does it mean if I do uh, rook to h7 plus plus? If I do two plus icons, what does that mean? Checkmate. Is, in, is it a fork? Checkmate. No, no, no. Checkmate. Nice. Checkmate in the older one in the descriptive notation. Is it, also be, also it, is, it, is, check it, it is a double check. It is a double check. So if you, yeah. if the it's a discovered check, in addition to a discovered check, the move the piece that you're moving is also attacking the king, then it 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 is a it is a double check. Yes. Double check just indicates that you can't defend. You have to move the king. Uh, and your extra, what does what do the two notations one zero or zero one indicate in chess? There are further nuances to this as well, but either of these would be the ideal scenario for players. Like the, ah, uh, I don't have a clue. Shitaj, I don't have. Any yeah, I won't let you pass on this. Huh? This is we are direct, and this is a new question. You have to come up with something. The the, the two, um, uh, I mean to indicate who starts, which which of the two players is starting. Although okay, it's... that's a that's a pretty reasonable guess, but not that. Ashu and Rishi. Uh, when I was guessing like... that, this is who like if you win, it's one zero. Uh, so can you zero. can you just distinguish between these two? What does this mean versus think, what? Uh, oh, white so white mean... white victory versus black mm-hmm. victory. That's right. This is white victory versus. Ah, nice. Victory. So uh, the only reason I knew these, even though I haven't played chess in like ten, fifteen years or something, is because I don't know if I'm imagining this, but growing up reading Times of India, uh, there used to be like a chess puzzle thing, or maybe like a chess match yeah, notation. Yeah. So I I remember reading up those things and remember that oh okay this is what this symbol means but then I never played the game in like I don't know how many years I ago. I originally wanted to make a quad on um, on the notations that indicate something interesting happening for you for example an exclamation mark would be like you know something interesting has happened two exclamation marks would be like brilliance that sort of thing uh, but I was told that it would be too hard a quad and we decided to step this down and make it slightly easier okay um, this is how that quad fared as you can see. Check. By the time check came in, it was the last question of the quad, and people had check as the one word that had not been used in the question yet, which is why that's eighty-five percent answered. Uh, so an ordering problem there. Uh, shareware question for Achyut and Rishi. Um, what term refers to shareware that generally has a time limit, a fixed number of uses, or a limited progression post which a payment is required for using full features? Binra is an example of free unlimited blankware where full features are retained. Mm-hmm. Mm. Wow! Wait, what is this? Interesting. What the time limit? I I remember guessing trial wear, but I don't think that was the. Yeah, right I think I think it is right. Was it? Yeah, was it yeah. Trial wear. I think so. But I forget why it was four letters. I think that threw me off. Was it trial wear? 
Oh yeah, I should make you guess both. No? One of them is trial. Where was the other one? Demo where? Demo where? No, but the, demos already. Ah, oh, demo. Oh, okay. It, ah, it this is, was something I had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Because demo is in the question already. Yeah, Those yeah. Uh, chip magazines used to have a bunch of game demos. Yeah, on the, on the CDs. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Another kind of shareware is called blank buy, named for persistent reminders to purchase the license. What is this type of software whose end goal is to annoy the user into paying? This was, uh, I think, Mag. people guessed bugware, but it's yeah, Mag or yeah, bugware. I guess popware because popware pop is also a mm-hmm. popular yeah. guess and and very reasonable guess also, but uh, Magware was right. Uh, question for Shudan Rishi. While not exactly shareware, blankware is a software that is shared by the creator under very lax norms. And the text says, uh, you can do whatever you want with this stuff. If you meet me someday and you think this stuff is worth it, you can buy me a blank in return. Beer well. Beer well is right. You'll notice Anirish trying to give a extra hint over here. While stronger <laughs> terms exist, this version is quite mild. I don't think anything could, anybody picked up on that. Beer well. No. Uh, and fourth question for Ashutan Rishi. Finally, there exists a type of shareware called blankware, which disables vital features of the program unless a license is purchased. For example, the ability to save or print a file can be disabled, allowing the user to explore the features of the program, but not generate any meaningful output. What is this type of shareware called that purposely impairs the software and disables its commercial usage? Uh, it was called so crippleware. crippleware. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm guessing this might have played the toughest. I, I uh, guess yes, disabled I it because is. it was seven letters, but I was like, I mean, it, it showed up multiple yeah, times in the yeah, question. Yeah, anyway. yeah, like, okay. Couldn't think of anything else. At, at this point, we're already in the non-ascending quotes, so these aren't supposed to be in order anymore. But uh, but yeah, Crippleware was yeah. the hardest one. And no extra for this. Uh, and I think we're on the last word. It is the bad state of affairs. Question is for Anand mm-hmm. and Hindu. First question for you. In international politics, a failed state is one that has disintegrated to a point where it has no legitimate authority to make collective decisions, interact with other states, provide public services, or use physical force. The last condition, known simplistically as monopoly on violence, comes to us from which English philosopher 1651 work, Leviathan? Hobbes. Oh, sorry. Right. Right. I was letting Bindu answer it if she wanted to. Yeah, I, I, I didn't pay it. My bad. It is, it is Bindu, Hobbes. you can take first shot because I've, like, I've read this quiz. Like Your no, second question. Everybody has, don't worry. Uh, in 2021, no, you said Bindu had it, right? Yeah, okay. Question for Arnold and Bindu. In 2021, the European Court of Human Rights held Russia responsible for causing the death of Alexander Litvinenko, a former FSB officer and Putin critic, by polonium-210 poisoning. Appropriately, considering he was a specialist in tackling organized crime while at the FSB, what term is he said to have coined to describe a state where officials, police, military become part of the criminal enterprise? Is it mafia? It is mafia yeah. state. Mafia nice. state. Good answer. And your third question, what two-word term is used to describe a politically unstable country with an economy dependent upon the export of natural resources? It was coined by American writer O. Henry to describe Honduras being exploited by the U.S. United Fruit mm-hmm. Company and is now also the name of a clothing brand. Banana Republic. It is Banana Republic. Well done. And your fourth question, what term is used in international politics to describe a state considered to be an outcast in the international community? It may face isolation, sanctions, or military action by nations who find its policies or its very existence unacceptable. Examples are North Korea, Syria, and Myanmar. The term originally comes from the name of an indigenous Tamil group considered to be outcast. It's a Gavalta, but it's actually. Gavalta. Gavalta. Any guesses, Arnold? Yeah, I, I know it. You don't have a guess. It's a uh, pariah state. Is right. Can you tell me the name of the Tamil group as well? Pariyar. 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 Really cool etymology from that. And our last question for today's set. This is an extra. This is for Arnold and Nindu. While it is the US that has traditionally taken the lead to declare nations as rogue states, in 2020, Noam Chomsky called the USA itself a rogue state in a scathing indictment of what action by the USA on 3rd January 2020 that led to much condemnation. Oh, what do you think this is, Bindu? Uh, some, do they, they send forces in somewhere? No, I, don't know. I think they pulled out from Afghanistan, right? Oh, yeah, that was around, that was a little later. That was around that time, yeah. Yeah, that that, time, yeah. 
makes sense. Yeah, you can go with that. Yeah. What's the other? That one. Uh, pulling out of Afghanistan. Not that. Should be good too. That's the opposite of what they would have <laughs> called a rogue state for them. I I had the same guess. Uh, Arutro, do you have anything? Yeah, not really. But someone wrote the answer. I think. <laughs> Uh, they've written American Airstrike Baghdad, which is not enough for points. But uh, Shiddhi Chowdhury, you have an answer? Let's go for uh, killing of that the drone, uh, using the drone to kill that Al Qaeda terrorist. I forget whatever his name was. Osama bin Laden. Yeah, what, not, what not in twenty twenty. There was some Al Qaeda guy who was killed with a drone. I think Ab 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 Abu Bakr Al Baghdadi. Ashutosh. Is, is it the Lack of condemnation for Khashoggi. Is that your answer? Mm, I, I yeah. was thinking that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll go with that. Okay, it is not that anybody in the audience. Kasim uh, Suleimani, killing of Kasim Suleimani. Yep, that's the one. It is the assassination yeah. oh, of Kasim Suleimani. Nice. nice. I'll right. the second time. Note, to the... We uh, yeah. finished today's set uh, with four minutes to start. <laughs> Thank you, folks. See you next I week. came here to try and delay you. Damn it, I just missed. You're not, it's not going to happen. 60 minutes is when we'll call it off no matter what you do. Question what, 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 was the, what was the Chelo question? If you can Chelo question, it's possible to show it again. I'm not sure. If I can, can you just go through the extra questions you had today, if you don't mind? Uh, I'll have to read them out, man. I, I might not be able to uh, jump to the beginning. <laughs> oh, okay. So, just a doubt like, was yeah. the Hindi what Padai also derived from that Tamil community? Is that so? It's an interesting yeah. question. The but, Hindi. Uh, what does the Hindi word mean? That also means outcast. Other... No, but paraya. It's not ours. It's not ours. It's the opposite of apna. Yeah. paraya. Yeah, yeah. Um, that is not paraya. It's paraya. Like, Correct. I just, yeah. Yeah, sorry, I didn't know the pronunciation, yeah. but okay, it is somehow linked to the. Okay, then I know what you're trying to do. I won't be able to show you all your extras. I'll give you only one extra. Precisely one. Oh, okay, so this is the only one. Uh, Tom Pritzker interviewed Pritzker winning architect Frank Gehry in 2009 and asked him, now that you've had a long career, is, is there a building you haven't done that you'd like to do? What did Gehry quip? Referring to the family business of the man interviewing him. Hmm. You are currently in the unenviable position of being the only person on this call who does not know the answer to this question. I know. I'm so sorry. Yikes. <laughs> uh... Referring to the family business of Pritzker, he must have been an architect only, I'm guessing. But and what else? Yeah, he's been looking for a famous brand name. Uh, pretzels, not pretzels. No. It, uh, we, we did eventually figure out that it was a hotel chain. Can you guess which hotel chain? Oh, hotel chain, Hilton. No, uh, the ones not... by the Pritzkers. Oh, okay. Hyatt, Hyatt, Hyatt. Okay. This is the Hyatt Hotel. And that that completes our letter for today, guys. I'll send extras to Kira later on. But thank you. So okay, much. thank you so much. Uh, really thank appreciate you. that. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. 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 Bye.